So students have done absolutely terribly on questions that look like this in the past. I'm going to try to change that with this video by talking a lot about the geometric interpretation and then talking about the formula afterwards. So how do we solve z to the 6th equals 64 cis 60? We want to know what z is. And at the moment, z is being raised to the power of 6. So let's take the 6th root of both sides. So z equals the 6th root of 64 cis 60. Now, the solutions to that, before I start actually solving them algebraically, let's look at the solutions. So these six solutions are our answer. There are six solutions to the sixth root of 64 cis 60. Now, these six solutions, importantly, all lay on a circle around the origin. And if we do a little bit of a zoom in here, it creates a polygon. In this case, because we're finding the sixth root, it's going to create a hexagon. If the question was different, let's say we were trying to solve this question here, then the answer would look different. It would be a, it'd be five equally spaced answers around the origin, and we get a pentagon. Um, if it was z to the 3, and we we're finding the cube root of that, you can see we get three equally spaced solutions around the origin, and it creates a triangle. So now that we understand this bit here, right, let's jump into it a bit more algebraically. All right. So before we get to there though, let's remember something we already know about complex numbers. And that thing we already know is how to raise them to powers. If we want to raise a complex number, this is a complex number, to a power, we do four to the power of three, cis, whatever the argument is, times three. So three times 20. Okay, so what's the answer to that? Uh, 4 cubed is 64, cis 60. 64, cis 60. If we raise 4 cis 20 to the power of 3, we get 64, cis 60. If 64, cis 60. All right, if we find the cube root of 64, cis 60, we will get 4 cis 20, right? That makes sense. We raise that to the power of 3 and we got that. If we cube root that, we should go back to where we started. So that gives us a nice algebraic way to find the cube root of 64 cis 60. The way that we do it is cube root the number 64, right? Which is the reverse of what we did here. We cubed it, so we cube root 64 here. And then look here, we multiplied by three. So let's divide by three here. And no surprises, we're gonna get the cube root of 64, which is four, and then we're gonna get cis, 60 divided by three, which is cis, 20. One solution. But I already sort of let the cat out of the bag and I said, we're gonna get three solutions. One of which is this one here. This one right here is four cis, 20. So what are those other solutions? Well, remember what I said, they are three equally spaced around a circle. So there are 360 degrees in a circle. So my other two solutions are going to be 120 degrees apart, right? So we have four cis 20 or 4 cis 140, so that's 120, or 4 cis, add on another 120 to that, and we get 260. So we have three solutions when we find the cube root, and those are all same uh, modulus and equal angles apart, 120, 120. Okay, um, you might be wondering, well, hang on, we cubed that and we got to that 
and then we went backwards and we got to here again where are these coming from well if we used our same thing that we already know about if we took uh, let's use a different color so we don't get too confused here if we took our solution for cis 140 and we raised it to the power of three what would we get four to the power of three which is 64 cis 140 times three which is uh, 420. Now, of course, 420 around the circle, 420 minus 360 leaves us with our answer, which is 64 cis 60, which is where we started. And of course, we could do that with this one right here. We could say, wait, is that really the answer? 4 cis 260 cubed. And then when we cube that, we get 64 cis 260 times 3, which is 780. Uh, 780, we subtract two trips around the circle, so 720 degrees, and we're left with 64 cis 60. So this is identical to this, is identical to this. You can see that there are three different complex numbers that we can raise to the power of three and get our original answer here, which is why when we cube root a complex number, we're gonna get three solutions. Okay, let's get rid of all this. So another example, and I've always been frustrated by how difficult students are finding these. So I wanna show you how fast it should be, right? Z to the six equals 64 cis 180. So Z is equal to the sixth root of 64 cis 180 divided by six. Now, this is only gonna give us one answer. We need six, but let's get our one answer first. The sixth root of 64 is two, and cis 180 divided by six is cis uh, 30. Okay, one of our answers is two cis 30. So I'm gonna draw that on an argand diagram cis 30 so about here and oh, let's go big about here and we know that because it's z to the six there's going to be six equally spaced solutions around a circle okay and there's one of our solutions angle there of 30 degrees if there are six equally spaced solutions so equally spaced So six equally spaced solutions equals 360 divided by six equals 60 degrees. That means that each of our solutions is gonna be 60 degrees apart. So we have 30 degrees plus 60 is 90, plus 60 is 150, plus 60 is or whatever that number is, 180 degrees away from that. So that's uh, 210 plus 60, which is 270 plus 60, which is right here. We have six solutions and you should be able to easily write those solutions, at least in polar form. Okay, those are my six solutions, six equally spaced solutions around a circle. And you hopefully are watching this now and saying, this seems really easy. Why have students in the past struggled with this? Well, it could be that when they're given a question like this, rather than think logically and in pictures, equally spaced things around a circle, they revert to the use of a formula. A formula that I think is quite difficult to engage with and quite difficult to understand. So let's look at it because I don't want you to tell people that I didn't show you. So here we go with it. We're trying to solve that, which I've rewritten here, z cubed equals 27 cis 150. And the first step here is to say that z is equal to that. Okay, the formula, the ugly formula that I don't really love is this here. Now, I'm not gonna run through what that formula is doing by talking about it just with n's and k's and a's and all the rest of it. Let's look at it for each solution because you can use this to find those three solutions. All right, step one. 
z is equal to the cube root of 27, we've been doing that, and then cis 1 over 3, because we're finding the cube root, if we we're finding the fourth root, it'd be 1 over 4, times 150 degrees, that comes from our question, plus 360 degrees times 0. That's our k minus 1. We're finding the k minus 1th solution. So if we want to find the first solution, we do 1 minus 1, which is 0. Okay, that's going to be equal to 3. The cube root of 27 is 3. Cis, 1 3rd, 150, because we're doing 360 times 0. So we just do 150. So our first solution is 3 cis 50 degrees. Now, that's, that's one solution. Uh, I can show it to you on our Argan diagram. It's sitting right there. And hopefully you're looking at that going, oh, great, because it's really easy now. I know one of the solutions is going to be over here somewhere, and I know one of the solutions is going to be over here somewhere because they're equally spaced around a circle. And if you're thinking that, good, because that's what we want you to think. Okay, what about if you're not thinking like that? What about if you're trying to engage with this formula? All right, let's look at the second solution. All right, step one. This time it's going to be the cube root of 27, still the same, cis 1 3rd, 150 degrees plus 360 times 1, right? Because we're trying to find the second solution, k minus 1 is our yeah, formula here. Okay. 3 cis 1 3rd of 510, which is 150 plus 360 times 1. And that is going to be our second solution. First solution, second solution. And you should be thinking, well, I know two solutions. The third one's going to be over here somewhere. I can find it easily. Of course, we can do it using our formula as well. As well. So the cube root of 27, that doesn't change. Cis, one third of 150 degrees plus 360 times 2, because we're trying to find our third solution. So K minus 1. Sub all of that in, one third of 870, which is 3 cis 290, which is down there. I've shown you the formula. It could be useful in a complex, unfamiliar question if you're trying to find like the 48th solution or something. Um, but for the most part, if you're trying to find the nth root, just think n equally spaced things around a circle. All right, that's it. Think geometrically, you can't go wrong.